Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Joni Young if you're new here and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this charming cottage window. We're going to be working on an 11 by 14 primed canvas. Now I primed it with just black paint and I've got a little filbert brush here that I'm going to be starting to uh, just freehand my window. I'm going to freehand everything here like I always do and I'm doing this in black and white first and then I'm going to come in and glaze over with a bunch of fun colors. Now make sure you look below the video in the description box for a full list of all the colors and brushes I'm using today. So just taking a little bit of water on my brush, some titanium white, I'm going to do a pretty lopsided rectangle here for the um, first part of the window, the shape, and I'm not concerned about making everything really even and perfect. I like that little bit of um, imperfectness in my paintings. I think it adds to the character and makes it a little bit more charming. So just making these little scoops and lines, leaving a little bit of a light gray tone underneath by just taking a bit of white over top of that black you'll be left with uh, some gray tones there. Now some of the lines will be a little bit brighter using more white and some of them will be uh, less bright obviously for the shadows so you've instantly got those folds happening and showing up in the curtains making it look 3D and then I'll add just a little bit off to the side close to the window frame. Okay, I've got my basic shape that I want. I'm going to add just a suggestion of a little bit more white here on either side for the bottom part of the curtains. And then whatever paint's left in my brush here, I'm just going to make a few little messy looking brush strokes in different directions, giving the illusion of objects through the window, maybe tables, books, a couch, I don't know, just something so it doesn't look like there's absolutely nothing going on in there. And then I'm just going to go over with my brightest sections here of white for the folds and the curtains. And having this bright white here is going to be really important for when we glaze over with our color. In order to for the color we want to show up, we need to have a white base. In this case anyways, but there are different um, techniques and colors for different getting different colors um, for a base. Uh, I won't go over that in this video. This is just strictly if you want a color to show up over top of white. I'm going to come in with the shape of the shutters on either side. Now these go slightly on an angle. They're not straight across <clears throat> because they're open. They're going to be a little bit have a little bit of a diagonal um, angle to them on the bottom of each side. I'm going to add a little bit of trim work, maybe some crown molding just to give this uh, a little bit more character and make it look really pretty and a little bit more ornate. I want to have it look like it's old at the same time so nothing is uh, perfect and nothing is completely one color so that it looks like it's faded in some areas. And I'll start adding more lines for the trim and the grid in the window. And keep in mind that you can change this up as much as you want, add something, take something away. This is really for inspiration and to help motivate you guys and just kind of give you those um, first steps that you need to take in order to uh, take a painting in your own direction or feel free to follow along step by step exactly to this one. So a little bit of lines that I flick down on the bottom are going to be the beginning stages of our abstract type of flowers. So I want those flowers to feel a little bit impressionistic and have almost like a drippy kind of a look to them. Um, if you don't want that, then you can just tap with your brush instead of pulling and flicking like I did. Now I just did this for fun. I thought this might make a little bit of an interesting design um, for the ornate trim work around the window and the molding so I just took the edge of my brush with a little bit of paint left in it and just tapped really quickly and close together. Now I'm going to pull straight up and down to start creating the illusion of wood planks for the shutters.
All right, so after adding those lines for the planks for our shutters straight up and down, I'm going to go across and create a few lines. These are just more pieces of wood for decorative purposes or to join those planks together, but we're gonna do three of those. So one on the bottom, the top, and across the middle. And notice how they're kind of, they're not perfectly straight. They're a little bit on an angle like the rest of the shutters. After I do this, I'm gonna add little black dots inside these um, little pieces of wood that go across just for like old nails or screws. And before I add any of those little screws, the little black dots, I'm going to sort of outline underneath with a bit of black. This is going to make them look 3D and the rest of that wood look kind of like it's underneath. And these pieces of wood that go across are over top and in front. So this also creates like just a little bit of a shadow, that illusion, and it makes everything look 3D. So I'll do this in a few areas here, not every single area. I'm also going to add a little bit of black in and around the window panes and the grid. Now I also thought it would be fun to do that same technique that I did earlier with the white, but with black up on the top here. Now keep in mind, this is just for fun and some of this may be covered up by the foliage that we add above. And I'm going to go over the grid and add a little bit of white, just highlight it and work on just the shape and the lines a little bit more. I kind of went off center a little bit, so I'm going to go back, and you'll see that in just a moment here. I'm going to go back and um, kind of correct that a little bit, but I'm overly not concerned with making everything perfect, but I definitely don't want it to be as lopsided as that, so I'll just show you how I correct that. It's really, really simple if you um, go off track like that. You can just come in and balance that out with a little bit of black. And it really makes it a lot easier to begin a painting just in black and white, especially if you're working on a lot of different things in a painting. It can be a little bit overwhelming um, and you can kind of get lost with all the different colors. So to make it a lot simpler, to simplify it and break it down a lot easier to follow along. I've been doing a lot of black and white uh, grayscale paintings for you guys, and I know that you're um, you're giving me positive feedback on it and letting me know that it is really, really helping you, especially if you're a beginner painter. But no matter what stage of painting you're at, um, this is actually a really, really fun way to paint because it's like you're creating, you're making up your own coloring book. So you can go over top and fill everything in with colors later on. And I think that's kind of fun, no matter what stage or level you're at, like I mentioned. So here I've added a little bit more crown molding on the top with uh, an angle on either side, a little diagonal. And then I'm coming in with my black, just little dots and dabs for those little screws or nails and then little lines to create a little bit more shadow and contrast um, on these wood planks on the shutters. basically just going to go around and add a little bit more light and shadow wherever I need to before we begin adding all of our foliage and our cute little pots. So to make these shutters stand out more and create a background, a backdrop for these to make them look like they're sticking out a little bit, it's important to have a shadow underneath. So I'm just taking straight black paint and going right underneath those uh, shutters 
and then I'm going to add a little bit black, a little bit more black here and there, and then I'm going to switch over to one of my mop brushes. And today I'll be using an oval mop brush. It's one inch and it's by Princeton. I really like this brush. I've been using it for a long time and I recommend it if you're not really sure about what brand to buy. It's one that's um, fairly inexpensive. No hairs have fallen out. It's lasted me a long time and I think that you guys would really like this brush too. So I got mine from Michaels, but I'm sure you can find one in lots of different arts and craft stores as well as online. All right, so dry oval mop brush, like I mentioned earlier, tapping right into my black, and I'm gonna go right on top, over partially over top of that crown molding above. And even though I'm painting black on black and it doesn't really show up yet, it will right now, as soon as we start tapping in a little bit of that white. So it's important to have the black base first because the background canvas that's black is dry. So you're not gonna be able to get this effect if you just go strictly, uh, with white and go right over top of the background. You need to have the wet black paint underneath first. So I do recommend painting this wet on wet to get those mid-tones of gray in there and your brighter highlights. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just leave a comment and whatever questions you have below in the comment section of this video, or um, you can also connect with me a lot quicker over on Patreon. I'll leave a link below this video for that. I'm going to tap in some more areas down here. And this, this little oval mop brush makes it so simple to create instant foliage. I love, love, love these brushes. I'm adding the same uh, techniques here as above. A little bit of white right after. And I'm going to have a little bit going up the sides here. It was first introduced to me, this mop brush, when I was a little girl and I used to watch uh, Bob Ross on TV. And I just thought it was like magical how instantly you could get that uh, foliage look and that texture and it looked so real. And to this day, I still, still really love using that mop brush. So I'm going to go over to a little filbert brush now and start creating kind of ovals and little round shapes here for the cute little... Um, pots for our plants. And I'm having fun with these. I want them to feel like they have a little bit of a character to them. So I'm going to add little legs at the base of them. And you'll see how much this painting starts to come to life as we add color. It's so, so fun. I can't wait for you guys to share your versions of this on our Facebook group. I know you guys are going to love this one too. Who doesn't love a pretty cottage uh, window and flowers and potted plants? I think it's something that everybody loves, and especially with the pretty little curtains and those shutters. And I'm adding a little pot underneath all of, all of the foliage that we've got. And then I'm going to make them look kind of highlighted in some areas by just adding a little bit more white. So just the idea is you don't want to have them all one solid color. So some areas will have a little bit less white, and then you'll have more shadow that way. So I'll just add a few little legs at the base. I'll go over those again in just a few moments. So some of them might look just a little bit too light. So I'll go in and add just a little bit of black or just brush over to blend out that white. Uh, it's completely up to you. If you want yours to have more color and be a lot brighter in the end when you add your color, then make sure you have more white on your pots. Um, so that's the key there. You're going to decide how bright your colors are and how vivid they are by how much white you apply first in this stage of the painting. I'm going to slowly add little handles on either side and then later on just sort of um, make them a little bit indistinct. I wasn't quite sure that I liked them that much. So there's a few different options. You can 
add um, more details and decorate your pots however you want. You could make little dabs or little white dots all across. Um, there's just so many different things you can do and there's tons and tons of photos out there for inspiration for references for ornate pots and planters. They almost look like their little ears. I'm not really crazy about these, so I think I'm going to take a little bit of them off or tone them down, maybe just add a little bit of black to them. And you could also just kind of camouflage little areas on your pots if you don't like them with more foliage and flowers. So I've got some window boxes here that I'm making and simply just pulling my brush back and forth to create little skinny rectangles. I'm gonna go around them, sort of outline them, make them pop out with black on either side. And I'm going to switch over to my mini mop brush, this cute little mop brush. I've got them in all different sizes. And they're just a set of makeup brushes that I found on Amazon that are have worked really, really well. So I'm just going to tap in with a little bit of white here. We've already got our, our little black base earlier that we added. So just a little bit of white here. And I'm using this small brush because these are, these are smaller uh, areas in the window, so I don't want to use a too big of a brush in case I go over uh, too much of the shutters and it just helps me have a little bit more control overall for those smaller flowers and smaller areas. So I'm just gonna go around and add a little bit more white and foliage and highlights wherever I want before we start the next step. Once I'm finished this, I'm gonna completely dry the painting off. And I'll say that again, make sure your painting is completely dry before you come in and glaze over. Here I'm using a flat brush, a bit of water, just a tiny bit of water. I don't wanna dilute this paint too much because I love the color it is. And this is Luminous uh, Rose by Holbein. One of my beautiful neon colors. I love the Holbein series. So I'm going to pick a few areas. I know that I want the background to be that beautiful uh, pink rose color. So I'm going to go over most of the background and the bottom of the painting, the floor or the ground with this color. I'm going to add a few accents here and there on the shutters, the crown molding, and maybe a touch of it within the flowers. Uh, we'll see how this progresses, but I really am getting excited at this point. I was almost going to leave it in black and white, but I'm so glad I decided to add the color. And you know, this way you guys have two versions. I'm giving you two options here. You know what it looks like with color and you know what it looks like black and white. So whatever your preference is, you can decide and you can choose if you want to make yours just in black and white or in color. Okay, now I'm right over to my cobalt blue and I'm going to go over the pots and part of the luminous uh, rose pink color. And I'm going to start adding this and create a beautiful violet color. And we'll have the bits of cobalt blue on the pots. And it's just looking so pretty at this point. I can only imagine how much prettier it's going to get as we add the foliage. And for the foliage, I've got green gold. I've also got a little bit of cadmium yellow cool. Here I've added a little bit of white to my blue and my rose, just a very soft, soft pastel lilac -y color here for the curtains. I don't wanna to have too, too much color on the curtains. I just want a hint of a pastel tone in there. Um, make sure you guys uh, know that you can look below for a full list of the colors and brushes I'm using today. And you can use any colors that you want for your painting. This is just my preference and what I went with, but there's so many color combinations you could do with this. You could paint this three or four times in all different uh, themes of colors. And I've got my burnt sienna here with a bit of water, so a little bit of neon orange as well by Holbein. And I'm just gonna glaze over these shutters not making anything really, really solid, right? You want to have it diluted just a little bit, always showing a hint of that um, original base underneath. So not that it would be wrong or bad if you did paint anything solid, it'll be completely fine. But um, I think that it's important to have that black and white base under there for uh, the highlights and the shadows. So if you took too much white and color 
white with a color or just white and went over the black areas of this painting, you would lose that shadow, if that makes sense. So see how I've done it thinly in a thin transparent coat and you can see that black underneath, which just looks like really dark, just a dark shadow. I'm just gonna go over the top with a little bit of my neon orange, my beautiful rose. And then I'm gonna go over to my um, green gold. If you don't have green gold, you can make it with cadmium yellow and black. Um, depending on if you have a cool or a warm yellow that you're using, it will change the hue up a little bit, but it's still gonna look really beautiful. Of course, you can use any green that you want. Um, I kinda am like addicted and kinda obsessed with my green gold lately. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have noticed I've been using it a lot in my videos. It's just so awesome and it looks good because it's got that olive olive tone to it and it tends to look really nice with very colorful paintings. Um, so sometimes I notice if I use a little a, a green that's a little bit more on the cool side, I kind of lose that um, sunny sunlit um, tone to my foliage and I, I think this is just it makes a really nice balance. I don't really know how to put it into words. I just know with my eyes when I'm looking at it, it looks right for me. But of course, you definitely, it's, it's so individual and personal. You can add whatever colors you want. Everyone's going to like something different. This is just why, if you guys are wondering why I'm going crazy with green gold in my videos, that's why I just really, really like the way it looks with all my colors and my paintings that I've been working with lately. So I'm just going over some areas. I'll be adding a little bit of uh, thicker amounts of cadmium yellow. This is where I'm going to have some bigger leaves and some brighter highlights. So I'll do that first with just cadmium yellow. And this is after I've added my green gold. And I, to make it really, really bright and like the sun's hitting it, uh, or maybe we've got some really light, soft yellow flowers. I'm going to add a tiny bit of titanium white along with my cadmium yellow. Now you'll see that in just a, a little bit. But first I'm going to take the a little bit of what I've got left there of my neon orange. And I'm going to start tapping in for some flowers here and there. And I'm also going to take a little bit of my rose, a little bit of white with that. Uh, after and make a softer pastel color that's really pretty but I'm just going to tap it in here and there uh, I imagine maybe these are high uh, not hydrangeas um, I love hydrangeas but I think that these are geraniums because I you know when I was uh, before I went and painted this I was outside watering my flower baskets and I've got the most gorgeous geraniums right now and uh, I, I think that was really in my mind when I decided what flowers I wanted for this painting so these are uh, geraniums and you can definitely do I, I know I mentioned uh, hydrangeas earlier those are gorgeous and those will look really pretty in this painting as well um, I really like the the neon the pop of color um, more of like a red bright orange I think it looks really pretty with the blue in this painting as well and that green gold so I'm just going to start adding a little bit more white here for the bottom of the curtains. I kind of lost them when I was adding my um, uh, windowsill and the trim around the windows there. So I'm just coming in now. So you can definitely come back. It's not too late. You can come back if you have to and add a little bit uh, to your, your curtains there. Um, you may just have to go over the trim again if you accidentally go over that while doing that. So just with a corner of my flat brush here, I'm taking a little scoop of each green gold and yellow, and I'm just gonna tap in. Now, just by tapping, look, you get instant leaves, right? It's so easy. You're just tapping to get those leaves. You're not even trying to make it look like a leaf. It just does by tapping, and that's one thing that beginner painters um, don't understand is that they're trying so hard to paint each and every leaf individually and it's really effortless. All you have to do is like less is more. All you have to do is just do a little tap here and there and it all comes together and it looks like you spent hours on something. So that's probably um, one of the best um, bits of advice I can give you guys in this video today while I'm thinking of it is don't think you have to work hours and hours on something to make it look real. Uh, you don't, it's uh, let me save you a lot of time and less is more. Concentrate on your highlights and shadows and your perspective and composition rather than one tiny thing in the painting. Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy yourself. You're just going to, you know, start to lose focus of the bigger picture. 
So I'm going to add a little bit more color here and there. Highlights, shadows. And for the most part, this painting is done. And I would like to do a series of pretty cottage windows like this with a lot of character and flowers, different colored windows, different shutters, um, maybe a bird or a rooster or butterflies. Let me know in the comments if that's something you guys would enjoy seeing more of. And here I'm adding this. I think this was like the favorite part of the painting when I decided to add that white with my luminous rose just to make a really soft pastel color here. I think this looks really, really pretty. We still have that gorgeous uh, full strength neon rose in the background. And I just add a little bit more here and there before I call this painting done. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me uh, for this painting today. I want to thank you for all the support you give me on Patreon. You guys know who you are means the world to me to have your support and your monthly contributions. Thank you so much for allowing me to do what it is I love to do and my passion in life, and that is to paint and inspire and teach you guys and share all of my tips and tricks that I've learned over the past 25 years of painting. So I wish you guys happy painting. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon in my next video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel now. Bye!